Everybody, Nathan East here, coming at you virtually for the Sweetwater Gear Fest 2020. And um, here we are, 2020. What a year! Um, who knows? <laughs> who knows where we're going with this? But I hope everybody's keeping safe. And uh, Sweetwater asked me to come on and and just say a few words virtually to you. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about my Yamaha signature bass, um, which is um, my pride and joy. Um, I've actually, as of next year, 2021, it will be 40 years that I've been with Yamaha, which is, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, it's been a fantastic, phenomenal relationship. And this is the BBNE2 um, signature five string bass. Um, ebony fingerboard, we have built in, my built in, um, equalization and all kinds of goodies on it. And it sounds, well, it's, it's the bass that I take with me on the road, on tour, and that I record with in the studio. Um, just a, a wonderful instrument for, for my needs. Uh, and I just, you know, speaking of being with Yamaha for 40 plus, going on 40 years, I just like to talk about a little bit about relationships and how this is a business where literally the relationships are what keep us going and, and keep us kind of alive and, and current. And so uh, I, appreciate my, my, I appreciate my relationship with Yamaha and Sweetwater and, and all the artists that I've worked with. It's hard to imagine when I was like a kid, you know, 14 years old watching Ed Sullivan and seeing this group called the Beatles come on and g grabbing a broom and, and jamming along with with Paul McCartney and and George Harrison and Ringo and John Lennon and uh, you know it's still amazing to me to to become friends with those guys and play actually play with George and Ringo um, so it's just when I think about you know everything that's happened since the time I picked this instrument up and now it's just it feels like uh, the, the greatest dream you could ever live. And to this day, I'm forever grateful. Um, lots, of, lots of great stories, lots of fun, uh, adventurous places I've been able to travel to all around the world. Um, when I, one of my very first gigs, when I was 16 years old, was with Barry White. He called me. Uh, he actually hired my entire, the band that I was in called Power, he entire, the, hired the entire band to go on tour with him. Uh, and we hit all the states. We hit the Apollo Theater, uh, Madison Square Garden in New York, uh, Cobo Hall in Detroit, you know, all these legendary places like Kennedy Center, played the LA Forum. And I can just remember uh, how excited I was at the age of 16 to kind of like be on the road with this amazing act, playing these arenas, the packed, sold out. And, you know, when I think back on it, you know, that was really paved the way for what I would continue to do. I uh, still 
get to travel with a lot of my friends. We, we would be in England, um, in Europe right now, where they're clapping touring. Had the uh, coronavirus 19 not shut everything down. I'm talking about the entire globe being shut down at the same time. It's just incredible to me. But the one good thing that we have is our music. We have our instruments, our gear, and we can really uh, continue to have some fun with this stuff. Um, with, the, with the bass, I was always grateful because it's an instrument that I'm in charge of, as, as a bassist, in charge of the harmonic relationships as well as the rhythmic. So, so you're kind of, the drummer's your best friend, but also the keyboard player and the guitar player, um, which makes it really fun being in a band like Foreplay where it's a quartet with those being the primary instruments. And uh, listening has always been one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever been given. When I, every time I ask somebody, what's the most important piece of advice you can give in music? And uh, every single person just about says, listen. And so that's what we should be doing today. We should be listening to what's going on around the world and just paying attention. Uh, it's very relevant. M music to me has, has been, uh, a big part of, of of my life, you know. So the two, there's like a, a gray area where the two come together, and life, family, travel, all of those things are are kind of like what we become as musicians. Um, the bass has become an amazing instrument for many reasons. Now, I mean, all you have to do is go on YouTube or Instagram and start scrolling down and you will hear some of the most incredible players and that's what I'm excited about because um, everybody has taken this instrument to another level and, and so I've been listening a lot you know it's basically a, a support instrument and we're responsible I mean our mission our our purpose is kind of like to be in service of, of the music in service of the artist, uh, serve the big picture. And so every time I'm in the studio or on the road, every song becomes the most important thing at that moment in time. And I just want to serve that, you know. Um, bass is very important in, um, in its role. Bass lines have become iconic that you can just recognize what a song is just by hearing. <laughs> And you know, you, you walk in the room and play that and every, every single person starts to sing along or... Uh, I have this tune in, in uh, with a high C, so I always start in the wrong key. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's a... or let's see. Um, so obviously. I, I am just ever so grateful for uh, for the life the bass has given me. And so, you know, today I just want to talk about just not too much uh, theory, but mainly concepts and... Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll get that a little later. Um, just concepts and, and, and um, what goes through my mind when, when I'm playing a song. Uh, which is which is basically staying out of the way, um, being being conscious of what's going on around me. Uh, one thing I I notice sometimes they ask me to judge these these battle of the bases and and every guy walks up picks up the bass and just starts slapping and whacking and, and just playing all their everything they practiced in their room you know and as impressive as that is the thing that I notice is that they don't they don't stop and listen or stop and figure out what the volume is or or check this they just start whacking away and, and like 
they're going to show you what their lick is, you know. And, and so it, it is impressive, but for me, the thing that most impresses me is when I walk away from uh, hearing music and my heart is broken, you know, when I've really just somebody just, just got deep and, and kind of emotionally connected. So when I'm playing, a lot of times that's where I'm putting my focus on, just how much emotion can you put in to a single note. And when you listen to people like B.B. King or Clapton, um, you can hear one note that they play and it just sort of penetrates your heart, you know. And that's, those are the kind of musicians. And, and I've always wanted to also have longevity in the, in the music business. So I didn't kind of just gravitate toward one genre. And, but I tried to learn as much about all genres as possible. So, you know, when I was growing up, I was listening to a lot of West Montgomery and, um, of course, you know, people like Stanley Clark and Jocko. Uh, but I was listening to the bands like Earth, Wind & Fire, uh, Chicago, Blood, Sweat & Tears, Tower of Power, uh, with all these great bass players in the band, too. And, and the thing I love is that there's so many areas of this instrument that you can kind of choose to go into. So I always suggest that, you know, get an idea of the big picture in your mind of who you want to be. You know, you want to be that guy that's just like a rock solid player, you know, and take Leland Scalar, for instance, one of my favorite players, favorite human beings, you know, where he's just solid and he's not trying to kind of show off any kind of chops but he's played on more records, movie, film, soundtracks, and just ends up being like very, very uh, pivotal and, and a pillar of the music industry. You know, his base is on, on so many records and songs. Um, and so that was always one of the things when I was growing up, I wanted to be kind of that guy that was just like, you almost, you almost uh, felt more than you heard, you know, just you, you feel the bass and the bass, when the bass is not there, um, you definitely know it. So um, there's a song that we recorded with a foreplay that I wrote, and it just, it's kind of like um, you can play it simple, you can add maybe a little more flair to it, but I wanted to just give an example of how I approach a song like this. Always like to slide into it. One note. Or the line. So when I think about playing, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about just the groove, you know, how, how deep can I make that groove? How deep can I dig it, you know, get right down as low and deep as possible, you know. I listen to the kick drum, I listen to, uh, you know, kind of, are they putting it 
in front of the beat, kind of laying everything back a little bit. And so there's lots to, uh, to, lots to comp contemplate when playing. Um, obviously, too, we, uh, we have so many choices of gear out there. So you want to get something that represents you, your sound, your feel, um, something that uh, you can play and sort of develop your own signature sound on. So tons and tons of great instruments out there. I love these. Again, next year will be the 40th year playing Yamaha instruments, and um, they haven't failed me yet. We've been working on something that I can travel around the world with, too, that's a little lighter <laughs> and something that I can actually get on the airplane once we start flying again. Um, so, so far, sort of a prototype is this um, version of my travel base. And I'm uh, still going to work on it to get, you know, a few more things. We want it to sound amazing, want it to be nice and light. And most importantly, though, something I can travel around with. I don't have to worry about getting to the aircraft and they say, oh, no, you have to check that, you know. Um, I know when we usually do these when we're in person, uh, we do a question and answer, and, and I get a lot of fun questions. So today I'd like to invite you to uh, ask me any of those questions you want just by uh, going onto my webpage, nathaneast.com. And in, this, in the uh, section where it says contact, just uh, <coughs> put a question there, and I'll, I'd love to uh, answer it. Um, also, I'd like to invite you to um, check out my online school of electric bass at artistworks.com. And that's actually very cool because we have, uh, we have the video exchanges where not only do we just uh, go over questions, I have hundreds of lessons and hundreds of videos um, that I've already answered the questions over many years. Um, and so you can, you can kind of join up there, look at all the lessons, and then send me a video of yourself playing, and, and I'll be able to look at it and you know, maybe critique and just give you some, impart some of my wisdom, and maybe you can impart some of yours to me. But that's at artistworks.com. And just uh, any instrument they have, you know, there's like 40 faculty members over there, and it's a really a great school. Uh, for, and now that we're all in quarantine, and shelter in place at home, you know, what better than to practice, which has been, uh, this has been fun for me to be home and practice. So, um, it's time to go now, but again, hit me up personally on my uh, website, nathaneast.com, and uh, I'll get back to you on that, or go to my artistworks.com page. And I want to thank Sweetwater, uh, and the Gear Fest folks over at Gear Fest for this for inviting me to be here today, and also Yamaha for uh, providing my instruments. Okay, everybody, thanks again, and listen, stay safe out there, and we will see you uh, see you around. Take care.